Do you feel like a bit of an imposter when it comes to academic writing? If you're going to do a good job of writing up your thesis, you've got to get over that. In this video, I'll be sharing my top tips on exactly how to do that. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and in the 20 years that I've been supporting PhD students, I have lost count of the times that students have said to me, I can't write like a proper academic. I'm not smart enough. I can't write using that fancy academic language that you see in all the journals. And if any of those things sound familiar, then don't worry, because by the end of this video, you are going to have some strategies and some practices that you can try that are going to make you feel so much more confident about your writing. Yay! Before we get into that, if you are currently writing up your thesis, you'll probably find this helpful. It's my self-study PDF guide and planner pack for writing up. It does what it says on the tin. It helps you write up your thesis one chapter at a time. If you do want to check it out, click on the link that is appearing on the screen right now, or go and check out the link in the description later on. Anyway, back to the video. Here are some things to try to supercharge your writing confidence. Firstly, ditch anxiety for authenticity. Writing a PhD is a daunting task, so it is completely normal to experience a touch of writing anxiety. Even seasoned academics, myself included, grapple with this from time to time. And one of the reasons that we get this anxiety about it is because of the perception that academic writing should be elaborate and fancy and wordy. Blah, 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 blah. There are quite a lot of scholarly texts that are written in exactly this way. And there's this kind of unspoken belief that in order to be taken seriously, you need to emulate this style. That is not true. You do not need to transform into a completely different person or write like an academic robot to succeed. Your unique voice and your unique perspective matter, and you do not have to sacrifice your authenticity. When it comes to academic writing, one of the most important things to remember is this. Be yourself. Don't attempt to transform into someone you're not or adopt this overly academic persona that really doesn't feel authentic. Know that you are not just a student. OK, you are an emerging scholar, a scholar who has mastered the literature, who is becoming an expert in your field. You've acquired a wealth of knowledge. You have conducted valuable research. Own that. Confidence in your expertise is going to come across in your writing. So, so much of this is all about mindset. Recognise your wins, acknowledge your expertise, know that you are a scholar. OK, you are not just a student. You are not somebody who's just winging it. You're not an imposter who's going to get found out by everybody. You know your stuff, OK, because if you didn't know your stuff, you wouldn't have gotten this far. You wouldn't have gotten onto a doctoral program in the first place. You have a history of academic success behind you. You've got at least one degree at this point, OK? And having that foundation of confidence is going to help you in finding your academic voice, in finding a voice that is authentically you. You don't have to adopt a new language or pad out your writing with unnecessary words. Clarity, directness and conciseness should be your guiding principles. And these things are only going to emerge when you find and you embrace your own academic voice. And that is only going to happen if you write regularly, OK? You need to be writing regularly at least once a week. And the more that you show up to the laptop, the more that you keep showing up and you keep writing, the more confident you're going to become. OK, so if you're doing something on the regular, it doesn't seem as scary. So just keep showing up. My second tip is all about something called active voice. You need to be using straightforward language and steering clear of any convoluted, excessive, elaborate sentence structures. Using active voice rather than passive voice is going to be super helpful for this. Here are some examples of the difference between the two and the number of words that you can cut out when you use active rather than passive voice. Now, whilst these word count savings might not seem like a lot, across a large thesis, they make a considerable difference. My third tip is take it one chapter at a time. Do not bite off more than you can chew. Maintain a really good focus by working on one chapter at a time. Avoid the temptation to flip back and forth between different chapters because this can dilute your concentration and it will just end up with you having a load of half written chapters that is going to make you feel really unaccomplished. A good benchmark to use here is to aim to get a chapter 75% complete until you put it down and move on to a different one. Don't keep blundering around from one chapter to the next because you're not going to gain any traction with any of them. You'll end up with a load of half dug holes and you'll be even more frustrated. If you're working on one chapter and you get an idea that comes into your head about another chapter, 
just take a moment and note that down. Write it down in a notes app or a notebook or a document on your computer and then go back to the chapter that you were originally working on. Don't let yourself get sidetracked and get distracted. Shiny object syndrome can play havoc with your brain <laughs> when you're writing up a PhD thesis. So if you have an idea for another chapter, just spend five minutes, boom, get it down, then put it to the side and move on because it's safe there. It's not going anywhere. Wherever you have written that down, that is going to be there for you to return to once you are done with the chapter that you're working on. My fourth tip is do not keep your writing to yourself. Share draft materials, even if they're not yet polished. Because when you're writing up your chapters, you're probably going to need several attempts at them before they're in good shape. And the quickest way to get them into a good state is to ask for feedback on every draft iteration of them that you do. So send them to your supervisor. Don't hold back. Don't wait until they're a bit further along or a bit more polished or a bit more perfect. You've got to kick out your perfectionism at this point. Stop trying to write the perfect draft chapter, okay? Because that doesn't exist. It will only get better with feedback. And if you are stalling on asking for feedback, then you're only delaying finishing your PhD. And when it comes to getting feedback on your drafts from your supervisors, I've got a couple of top tips for you here as well. So firstly, be really clear with them about what it is you want feedback on. So if you want them to just give you some feedback on your understanding of something, on the content of a draft chapter, rather than the structure or the grammar or the typos, tell them that. Secondly, don't be afraid to ask for feedback in a format that is different from the format you usually receive it in. So there is a tendency for supervisors to just give feedback in track changes, in MS Word track changes. And you receive your draft chapters back and they're covered in comments and things moved around and things underlined. And that can be just really overwhelming. <laughs> so if that is not the type of feedback you want, you might want to talk to your supervisor about having feedback in a slightly different way. So you might want them to do you a voice note. You might want them to do a screencast where they kind of go through your draft and they comment like verbally on particular sections of it. You might just want to have a face-to-face -face meeting with them for some feedback. So please be aware that feedback can take men many different forms and don't be afraid to ask for it in the format that you want it in. So don't be afraid to go and talk to your supervisor about the kind of things that they're giving you feedback on and the format that that feedback's taking. And there is a lot that your supervisors can teach you about writing. So to return to my original point about this, send them the damn draft. So to recap the four things that you can do to boost your academic writing confidence. Firstly, ditch anxiety for authenticity. Secondly, use active voice. Thirdly, take it one chapter at a time. Don't bite off more than you can chew. And fourthly, don't keep your writing to yourself. Just send your drafts to your supervisor. I hope that was helpful. Be sure to check out my writing up pack and I'll be back soon with another video full of tips and advice on navigating the messy and the magical of the PhD journey. I'll see you then.